Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to... Welcome back to Shelf Isolation, where I recommend great kids' books that you can read online while the library is closed, suggest activities to do at home, and tell bad jokes. Today, as you might tell from my attire and my sleepy companion here, is books to read at bedtime. But first, a joke. What kinds of stories do cows tell at bedtime? They tell dairy tales. <laughs> Our books today are all picture books, but no matter how old your kids are, reading at bedtime is a great way to get in some good book time together. So the first book I'd like to talk about today is by an author I really enjoy. It's called Llama Llama Red Pajama by Anna Dewdney. And you can read this one on Library To Go. There are a lot of Llama Llama books, but this one was the first one, and it's just as good as when it was first published about 15 years ago. It's all about a baby llama who goes to bed but starts worrying about where his llama mama is. And he cries for her and she doesn't come right away um, when he calls and so then he causes some real llama drama. But llama mama does return to set things right, of course, and um, we receive a very, very reassuring message that even if a parent isn't right here, right now, immediately, uh, they're still nearby and caring for you. So this book is fun to read and you'll find your tongue tripping all over all of the bedtime baby llama mama llama drama. <laughs> if you want to listen to the book um, but you can't get it on library to go because it's checked out, um, there is a recording on YouTube of Anna Dudney reading the book out loud uh, herself. So I've put a link in the description of this video if you'd like to check that out. Our next book is another one for the younger set. Um, it's called Good Night, Good Night Construction Site by Sherry Rinker. You can read and listen to this book on Tumble Books, so no waiting list. And it's a really sort of gentle, calming bedtime book all about different construction vehicles resting for the night and settling in. If you have a kid who's just obsessed with diggers and backhoes and dump trucks, which I know a lot of them are, I got a lot of preschool aged kids at the library looking for the truck books, um, then this is the bedtime book for you. And it also has a nice rhythm and rhyme to it and the illustrations are really bright and engaging, so it's just a lovely book all around. The next book I'd like to mention is a little less well known than the other two. It's called An After Bedtime Story by Shoham Smith. And you can read this one right away with no waiting list on Freeding. And it's about a little girl named Nina who doesn't want to go to bed while her parents and other grown-ups are having a party elsewhere in the house. So she escapes her bedroom and she starts stirring up trouble at the party which frustrates her parents at first, but then they and the other guests start joining in Nina's hijinks and their party gets wilder and wilder until everyone is so exhausted that they're ready for bed too. Um, I like this one because it's relatable in so many ways. The child's frustration at being left out by being put to bed while the adults are still awake and the parents dealing with the child escaping their room and just refusing to be put to bed altogether. And the last book I'd like to recommend is another Robert Munch book that you can read on Tumble Books. They actually have a lot of Robert Munch books, so if you're a fan, several of them can be found on that platform. And it's one of my favorite books about sleepwalking. It's called 50 Below Zero. And it's about a boy named Jason whose dad has a real sleepwalking problem. He winds up in the most ridiculous places in the house, on top of the fridge, in the bathtub, all over the place. And one night, 
Um, he sleepwalks right out of the house and out into the freezing cold, 50 below zero. And so Jason has to go out after him and drag him back home. And um, once he's done that, he finally comes up with a way of keeping his father under wraps at night. Um, but as in many Robert Munch books, there's a little bit of a twist at the end that sort of leaves it a little bit open-ended as to what might happen in the future. Um, so those are our books. I found kind of a neat craft today um, that uses paper mache to make a sort of starry night globe that you can put on top of a night light or on top of any other little light bulb. It's really neat. All you need is uh, a balloon, uh, some newspaper, some liquid glue, like white glue, water, and paint. I've put a link in the description of the video with um, the instructions that I found, but basically all you do is mix one part glue and two parts water and mix it all up. You dip the um, strips of newspaper in there and so that's paper mache and you cover layer it on the balloon until it's all covered up and then when you pop the balloon when it's all dry it'll keep its shape and then you can paint it up to look either like a starry sky or whatever you want really you can make it look like anything depending on what colors of paint you have or what you like and then you can um, put it on top of a night light or anything else and see the light shining through. It looks really neat, kind of like a little lantern. So I hope that gives you some ideas. I'm going back to bed now.